this should be our final update before the things that are going to take place tomorrow, Saturday. We uh, have a plan. We know that uh, we're going to, at 11.15, we're going to have a sermon that I'm going to be preaching. It's going to be streamed here on the homepage of the website, waynejamel.com. Uh, that will be uh, coming from a, a YouTube stream. We uh, want you to be uh, to be watching it with the people in your household. We want you to uh, discuss with them as well as others on the phone or through Zoom, the discussion questions. For Sabbath school, you know that you're supposed to connect with your Sabbath school class through phone or Zoom or any other medium that your Sabbath school teacher decides upon and uh, keep a level of connection. But what about evangelism? What about it? You know, I spoke with uh, my conference director and he is still giving us the okay to do evangelism. Yes, we gotta practice social distancing. What is that? Obviously, you know, social distancing means that you can go out of your house. You don't have to stay inside your house. You know, as long as you can stay uh, within six uh, feet away from somebody. I encourage you, just like how Jesus sent out his disciples two by two, the 70 disciples that he sent out, he sent them out two by two and they went and did uh, preaching and they did good works and they uh, helped people. We can still go out two by two or a few people at a time and as long as we keep the social distancing, we can do evangelism. This is not a time to do less, this is a time to do more. I wanna uh, read you uh, something here uh, from uh, a book uh, that's uh, entitled Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 713. It says, it is our duty as we see the signs of approaching peril to arouse to action. You know, uh, I was talking with one of uh, uh, my members yesterday and he was saying how he wishes that the church would not you not use this time to kind of just be lackadaisical but it would like motivate them to want to do something let it be aroused to action let none sit in calm expectation of the evil comforting one comforting themselves with the belief that this work must go on because the prof because prophecy has foretold it and the Lord will shelter his people that's too lackadaisical like oh you know you know all these events you know it's just part of prophecy just let it happen we are not doing the will of God if we sit in quietude doing nothing to preserve liberty of conscience fervent, effective prayer should be ascending to heaven that this calamity may be deferred until we can accomplish the work which has so long been neglected. Let there be most earnest prayer and then let us work in harmony with our prayers. Let us work in harmony with our prayers. Now, this is talking about the upcoming peril that Jesus predicted. Jesus predicted that one day there would be a time where Christians would be persecuted. That they would uh, be slaughtered like, like none other. That's what this context of this, uh, this uh, chapter is talking about. But I think the principles are there. We cannot sit in quietness just like, well, you know, you know things will happen, whatever. We got to pray like no other time before, but not just prayer. It says we need to have our prayers be in harmony with our work. We've been neglecting our work, and so now we got to work and pray. When Jesus sent the disciples out, he says that the harvest is ready, but the labors are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that there will be more workers. But what did Jesus do? He sent them out two by two. While they were supposed to be praying, he still sent them out. You see, pray and work. 
you know, I really hope during this time that we continue to work. So what kind of work am I saying? You know, let's follow what many people who are not even in our church are doing. When I go to the Pauling Resource Center constantly throughout this week, what have I been seeing? I've been seeing people volunteering their time. I've seen people who just who just show up and say, hey, I was at the grocery store. I just wanted to, I, I saw some food there. I bought the food and I wanted to come and bring these uh, resources to you. These are people who are not in our church, but they have been aroused to action. What about us? We are supposed to be the leaders in these things. We are supposed to be leading the world in action of service. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit at home and just be quiet? I want you to watch the, the live stream. I want you to, to be a part of it. I want you to call each other. But you need to get out of your comfort zone and help. You know, sadly, uh, men, uh, I was there at the research center and they called a bunch of patients, that, a, a, a bunch of their clients and said, hey, I'm so sorry, but we don't have uh, people. We're going to have to cancel your ride to the doctor. There are people who need a ride to a doctor's appointment. There are people who are going to need uh, groceries brought to their home. Uh, I was told that the, the resource center needed me today to go drop off uh, a care package to somebody. Listen, as long as we maintain uh, the social distancing, you know, keep, you know, try your best to, to be as distant as possible from people. Yes, I know if you have a health condition or if the, the CDC says, you know, if you're 50 years or older, you want work from home, even you can still do something. You can pick up the phone and call somebody and give a word of encouragement. AdventistGiving.org, you can go on that website, AdventistGiving.org. I'll leave a link uh, here on my website. You can donate money to help further the cause of what we're trying to do in the churches in terms of evangelism and in terms of community service. You, this is not a time to do less, it is a time to do more and more than just pray. What do you mean more than just pray? Prayer is important, but prayer needs to be in a harmony with works. In fact, James said this. I love going to the Bible because although writers would uh, put things down, it, I, I read that, that passage uh, from Testimonies for the Church. Why? Because it's in line with the Bible. James chapter 2 Verse 14 to 18 says, What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? <laughs> Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one says to them, oh, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, <laughs> but does nothing, about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. In some verses, faith without works is dead. Imagine that. Imagine if somebody says, oh, I need, I'm hungry, I need food, I need clothes, and you're like, oh, I'll pray for you. But you do nothing? James! The leader of the church at the time says, what is the point? What good is that for that person? You see, you are the answer to your prayers. If you're praying to God to help somebody, be the person to help them. This is not a time as a church to be like, well, I'm going to do nothing. Jesus tells us to go and not to hide. So when I say, I want to clarify that, when I say, yes, I want, we're not gathering as small groups, I want to be clear that I'm not saying that we do nothing. I am actually asking us to do more. Yes, we're going to follow the CDC guidelines, uh, which by the way, uh, they're, they're not saying, they're saying, yeah, keep it in groups of 10 or less. However, our conferences want to be cautious and so they're saying, you know, no small group gatherings for the time being. And so we want to honor that. However, the conference has given us permission to go out and still do acts of service. Still keep the doors of our church open for prayer. And people will just have to come in a few at a time. Just two or three people coming in at a time for prayer. We're going to do these things. If, if, if We want to keep uh, the options open for people to be available for prayer. We want to be there in the community to serve them. Look at what the rest of James uh, says uh, in verse 18. It says, but some will say, 
you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works. Well, huh. But I, and I will show you my faith by my works. There's a lot of people with faith. There's a lot of people who talk a good game. They pray nice prayers. They talk about, oh, you know, when the time of trouble comes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be faithful to the Lord. If you can't be faithful to the Lord right now, what happens when real trouble comes? What happens then? Show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith by my works. You see, it's the combination of two. Faith, prayer, works. You put it all together and God can utilize you. Now, I'm not asking you to go out and do works without faith, without prayer. That's a recipe for disaster. But when you go out and you work through faith, with trust in God, God can utilize you. So I want you, when you talk to your, your Sabbath school class or when you call people, your friends, your family, and you speak to them on phone or Zoom or whatever you do, WhatsApp, Facebook groups, whatever, I want you to strategize how can you be evangelistic even though we're in a time of crisis. I want you to contemplate that. Tomorrow at 11.15, I'll be preaching my sermon here, right here on the website. Tune in. I want you to discuss the questions and plan on how you can still be a light in the world. How you can still be a salt of the earth. Salt only does good when it's not hidden away in a salt shaker. You gotta go out. You gotta connect with other people. Figure out ways how you can do that. And God will bless.